Did you start playing music? No comments for mum, please. <laughs> well, uh, I have an older sister, and she was in the band. She played the clarinet, which was actually my uncle's clarinet. That thing is, like, older than I am. Uh, and I wanted to do everything my big sister did. So I had to join the band, too. So I started playing the flute, and uh, eventually my parents got us a nice, beautiful piano. So that led to me playing the piano, and uh, when I was in my formative years, I got really into Lisa Loeb. So I played the guitar, and uh, now I pretend like I can play a little of everything, just because I... She can, you know that. Just because I like music so much. So... But I did go to college for music, so I do take it seriously. And it's not the easiest of careers, but it's the most fulfilling for me. So, and where did you go to college? I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and did she pay for it by any chance? She no. did pay for it. <laughs> and has she paid you back for it? I no. never will. In I don't love. expect it. In love, she's paid you back. So we have a question. What are your musical influences? Well, um, honestly, my musical influences are people I get to play music with, including you and Joe. And I had a band for a really long time in the States called Via Audio. And they were some of the best musicians I've ever played with, and I was really lucky to play with them. But I also really like Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> so apparently you can't hear me talking. That was, the question was, what are Jess's musical influences? Okay. <laughs> and um, this is an important one. Some of you out there might think you could do the same thing. What advice do you have for people who want to write their own songs? Just do it, man. <laughs> Just do it. It's like anything else. It's a muscle, and you have to work at it. And for every good song you write, you're going to write 20 terrible ones. So, and a lot of songs are never going to see the light of day. But also, I would say, don't be so precious with them that you don't let anybody hear them. Because we're all our own worst critics. And, and you know, everybody has different tastes. And I think just write... Right, right, right. Listen to a lot of different kind of music and don't, don't always keep writing the same song. <laughs> you know? So I'm going off script here. Do you find that your musical writing has changed? Based? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, depending on who I'm hanging out with, who I'm playing music with, and uh, even where I'm living, it's all played a, a part because the radio in Portugal is going to be a lot different than the radio in Los Angeles or New York. And... Um, yeah, I go through phases. Like I was telling Joe, I went through an Elliot Smith phase. He's a really depressing kind of guy, and that was when I was depressed. And now I'm not so depressed, so I listen to, you know, Elvis and more rock and roll music. So it, it definitely... <laughs> and how does music influence how you feel? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I'll put it to you this way. The three of us started a new band, and the other day we had rehearsal. Yesterday? Was that yesterday? yesterday? No, it was the day before yesterday. But the night before that, I played a party, and so I was super hungover, really cranky. As soon as we started playing, man, I felt so much better. As soon as we stopped, I was... Yeah. But it was playing with these guys and that working on new music and just feeding off of each other, that it's like medicine, so... All right. And okay. this is a very important question for all of you. I know you now want to support Jessica, having seen her talent. So how can we support you and buy your music? <sighs> well, it would depend on me actually recording music and putting it on the internet, I guess. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I think even though we don't really, we just started out, we don't have merch right now. Really the best way that you can support artists is to buy their merchandise. Because even if they're an established artist on a big record label, the record label is going to take a cut of almost everything except the merch table. The merch table can have whatever you want on it and the artist gets to pocket all of that. So if you see somebody doing a fundraiser or a Kickstarter or something on the internet, throw in 20 bucks, man. Uh, I hate to say it, but the best way to support music is to listen, 
but to show, to, to play your part in it by showing your appreciation for it. And one of the best ways to do that is throw a little something in the hat, honestly. So right on cue, Anna is passing a box there to collect any money you would like to donate to Jessica's cause. And in the meantime, does anybody have any questions for Jessica from the audience? How long have you been playing for? Um, about 20 minutes. <laughs> right? Since a kid then. Since I mean, I remember figuring out how to play a little drummer boy when I was four or five years old. So. Well, and if I can interject. Sure. Uh, when she was in middle school, she played the Godfather theme on her <laughs> on her keyboard at uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Talent Night. Talent Night. And then at 12 years old, she asked us to buy her a guitar, and we bought the cheapest guitar we could find, and she never put it down. And after that, we bought her a better one. And I still have that guitar. <laughs> there you go. So I think she was born with it. Um, Head, uh, headline in Glastonbury? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, I'll be in my 40s. Um, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, I'll uh, be, uh, you know, still playing with these guys and still.